So working on a farm like this over the years, you do a lot of repetitive tasks by yourself and that gives you a lot of time to think. And over the years, I've done a lot of thinking about the life skills that I've learned doing this work that I never learned in school or anywhere else in my education before, or basically after I before I graduated college. And I think it's important to talk about those because in my generation, full disclosure, I'm a millennial, um, there's not a lot of emphasis on learning practical skills because the college system is kind of strongly emphasized or was strongly emphasized to my generation, I think more than any other. Um, I think more people probably percentage wise went to college between the ages of uh, right now, between the ages of like 25 and 35 than anywhere, any time in history. And I kind of, don't agree with that because I didn't you I have not used more than 10% of what I learned in college in my life since I graduated and it costs an absorbent amount of money and that's a whole nother conversation I don't want to get into but if I had known what I'm about to talk about today when I was 16 my life would have been a lot different because I would have realized there's other options out there besides college that I can make a really good living in doing something that I actually like to do. And um, farming is one of those. But what I want to talk about today is more than just the, the business of farming. It's the life skills that you learn in this that are going to benefit you no matter what you want to do in life. You know, if I had actually done this for just two years out of high school, and still done something else, I think I would have been way better off than I, I was, you know, five years ago. Because um, since I've started this, I've learned skills that I could take in for the rest of my life. Whereas in college, I can't even remember the last time I've even thought about most of the lessons I learned in business school. And I went to business school and I run a business now and I learned nothing about running a business in business school. So what I want to go into today are some are five life skills that I've learned since I started this farm that are going to benefit me the rest of my life and why I think they're so important. Even if you started a farm part-time for a year or two and then quit, these skills you learn doing that are invaluable. You're never going to learn them in college. Um, and you could apply them to whatever business or whatever direction you want to go in life. So I'm going to get into it and I'm going to take you around the farm as I do. So the first and most important lesson in this video, in my opinion, that I want to talk about is how to let go of all expectations. So what do we got right here? is a bed of tomatoes that I planted back in May. Um, each one of these plants probably cost me at least five dollars in real cost um, just to plant and then probably another fifteen twenty dollars in labor to get to this point and um, a whole lot of stress and pressure to uh, to get to this point and what's going on with this particular plant and about 10 five or ten other ones in this whole greenhouse is there's a bacterial disease that's eating the roots and it's probably gonna die so if you look at these leaves you see how they're drooping like that it's not too good and so <clears throat> what this is is an example of something that I planned for making money with <sighs> but I kind of knew there was a disease in this greenhouse first and um, I knew there was risk involved. So what I did was I planted it and I let go of all expectations of what the results would be. And that's a hard thing to do when you have a business like this where you're depending on the income 
to pay for your bills and hopefully make some money at the end. Um, but I've already gone through so many situations in the past already where I've had, I've had expectations and it didn't work out. And it's really soul crushing when that happens. Last year, it was much worse than here. We lost 20 or 30% of all tomato plants that I planted in here from this disease. And it's something that stays in the soil and takes probably a year or two to get out. And so, uh, at least this year I figured out what it is and I probably can get away with planting with whatever we got in here. We'll still produce a pretty decent amount of tomatoes. Um, it's not going to be as much as I wanted, but that's okay. So what I'm doing literally right now is I'm moving on to plan B, which is planting head lettuce in the spots that I could tell the plant's probably going to die and it'll still make a decent amount of money. But this letting go of expectations thing is such a big deal that I've had to learn pretty much the hard way and I'm still learning it. I'm by far not um, really, really good at this yet. Um, I still have huge expectations for things that um, I really have no control over. And that's the key detail what I'm talking about here. Most of the goals and aspirations that you have in life, you have no control other than doing your best. You have no control over the end result. And what I'm doing right now is doing my best. I'm planting a second crop that will hopefully earn some money, but even that might not work. And I just plant it and let go of what the end result is. And this lesson can really change your life because you really have very little control over the results of your life other than what effort you put in. But the actual result is pretty much, there's so many factors that are out of control. So this tomato is an example of that, right? I have expectations of making oh, $50 or $100 from this plant and I'm going to make pretty close to zero. So, because that disease was something out of my control, I couldn't, there's nothing I could do to stop that disease other than now what I can do is probably not plant in this bed, not plant tomatoes in this bed next year, I'll plant something else, and then hopefully a year or two later I can do something about it. You know, there's always a solution to these things, but, you know, you never know how things are going to go until you do it. And that applies to any kind of business that you're going to run. Um, it applies to dating, you know, asking a girl out and getting rejected um, and not knowing what she's going to say. You know, um, it applies to goals that you set, you know, you're going to set the goals and you're going to try to reach them. But do you really have full control over whether you reach them or not? No, you can only do your best. And uh, this might be a controversial topic to some people, but in my opinion, that's the way it is. You know, you can't really control, you can't control other people, very, first and foremost. You can't control plants. You can't control life around you. You can only control yourself and what effort you put in. And so what I'm doing is doing my best with this situation. And in my experience, that usually yields the best results is when, when I'm trying to control the situation from seed to harvest and I'm freaking out and I'm checking the plants every day and I'm like, oh man, if they're, if that leaf starts to wilt today, my life is over. You know, that's the thoughts that used to go through my head and they still do sometimes, not going to lie. Um, I'm just, I'm getting better at it. I'm a work in progress, just like all of you, but the, end result is something I really don't have much control over other than just putting in my best effort. And once you really, really experience that and understand it, you'll find you become a lot more successful because when you try and control it the whole time, usually you screw it up more, you know, like, especially with the tomatoes. I remember last year, you know, I was checking on them like three or four times a day 
just because it was, and I was creating so much extra stress for myself that really didn't, in the end, when I looked at the numbers at the end of the year, it made zero difference, me freaking out like that. You know, it, I didn't make my life any better by doing that. It, it probably made it, it worse by just creating a bunch of extra stress and the actual plants did worse. So if you just let go of the result, you know, you have, you, you always have to have some kind of expectations with business, right? You have to set goals and stuff, but you know that there's going to be a lot out of your control with the numbers and um, the yields and all sorts of stuff. With farming, I have basically control over when I start the plants, how much water I can put on them, and, and probably the environment that they're growing in, like a greenhouse, but that's about it. And especially when you start to throw in um, employees, I can't control them other than just trying to hire the best people I can and facilitate their success as much as possible. But ultimately they're out of my control too. So I have to let go of that situation also. And I could just, all I, have, all I can do with them is try my best also and try and respect their time and respect their wishes as much as possible while trying to get some productivity out of them. And um, that is another example of how I, I've found a lot more success hiring and managing people like that than trying to spend three weeks trying to find the per perfect person or whatever. You know, it's about going with the flow. Business is about going with the flow and trying your best. Um, and if you can master that, even if you do this for two years, you can start any business and have that experience of b being like, okay, I hope we're going to reach $30,000 in sales in six months, but the odds are it's going to turn out differently than that expectation, and I'm okay with that. When you're okay with that from the get-go, the peaks and valleys become a lot less stressful, and it applies to so many other things in life than just farming. You know, this is, this is a kind of a business thing, to be honest. It's not just, it's really not about farming, but the analogy works really well because plants, I think all farmers can relate to what I'm talking about. You, you don't have control over the weather. I have no control over the weather. You know, today we're in second week of August and it's barely 70 degrees. I have to put a flannel on pretty much to walk outside. It's super cool for around here, you know, and, uh, that's why I have a greenhouse. That's what little control I can have over that weather. But um, there's very little control in the outside, everything outside of you. There's very little control. You have very little control over that. All you can control is how you react to that and how you prepare for that. But you can't obsess about it because the end result is ultimately not up to you. Um, I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I'm articulating this very well, but I'm talking about a business lesson here basically. And, um, it's about going with the flow. So let's move on to the next one. So these three fans that you see above me are circulation fans that I put in or I wired and installed uh, I think it was around May of this year. I think I finally got them done around May. I can't remember. Um, but it took me a year of screwing up to get them done. I had the materials back basically May of 2023. And I tried and tried and tried to get them installed on time last year. But these are weatherproof fittings. Um, in the for the conduit because I thought That was going to be necessary for this greenhouse because I was going to have sprinklers running So I didn't want the wires and stuff to get wet. I Don't even know if I was right about that, but it turns out that um, I'm still learning a lot about electrical wiring and stuff and the weatherproof fittings I find to be a lot more difficult to do than just um, indoor fittings for conduit because I've done the other greenhouse in indoor conduit and it was a lot easier to do. But these weatherproof ones have just been a nightmare. Um, I had to look up a YouTube video every five minutes to figure out how the fitting is supposed to fit. Um, and I'm not an electrician. I'm just learning this as I go for the most part. And that learning as I go thing is what I've been doing 
since I started the farm because I didn't learn anything about being handy in school. I didn't learn anything about being handy. Um, I learned a little bit growing up, but most of it I learned just by starting the farm. By building these greenhouses, by wiring stuff like this, by figuring out the plumbing for my irrigation system, fusing pipe. Basically, I had to do all that by myself because I couldn't pay somebody to do it. And uh, I think most farmers can relate to stuff like that. But, you know, I didn't start learning that stuff until I was in my late 20s. I could have learned it when I was 16. And being handy, I mean, I, I can look at a house that I might want to buy now and see what the conditions of it are inside and be like, um, yeah, I can buy this at a discount now because I can renovate the inside myself because I've done a lot of that. You know, I've done enough of that with just my little wash pack building to be like, oh yeah, I could at least, if I don't know how to do it, I at least know how to figure it out. I could go to Ace Hardware and ask those guys because that is probably one of the best educations around here. It's just going to Ace Hardware, asking the guys working there how to do stuff. That's how I've learned how to do a ton of this and electrical guys too, electricians, um, and YouTube videos. But that being handy thing is such a lost skill in my generation. You know, none of my friends know how to do this kind of stuff that I grew up with. Um, and neither did I up until about four years ago, you know? So, um, that's a skill you could take with you the rest of your life, being handy, knowing how to build stuff, knowing how to, um, cut a piece of wood to the right dimensions, you know, framing, all of these end walls, I had to frame myself by uh, cutting the wood myself. I'm really glad that my dad kind of pushed me in that direction when I first designed this greenhouse. Um, and even though it's not really the best solution, because eventually I'm not going to do wood at all, but I'm glad he made me do it that way and build it myself because I learned how to do it. It was really painful for me um, because I had no experience. Like, Screwing in all of these tech screws into metal is really hard. There's thousands of these things in this greenhouse, and you have to put in all of your muscle to get them to go in. If you've ever done that before, you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is extremely thick steel. You're screwing in a piece of metal through other piece of metal, and you're doing it on top of a ladder, which is really stressful because the ground's not always even, and you got to go pretty high up to get some of these tech screws. You know, building stuff out of necessity is not something I really like doing. It's not like fun to me. Some people do think it's fun. It's not fun for me. I don't enjoy it, but I'm glad I know how to do it at least now. And I know how to use a drill really well. I know how to use a sawzall really well. I know how to use a pretty good chunk of power tools just because of building this farm. And, uh, you know, I can solve a lot of problems just because I've solved the problems to build this farm. Um, so it gives me a lot of confidence that way. But um, I, you can't go wrong by being handy. You know, I, in school, I learned a lot about what, what, what are some useless things that I learned in business school, like um, how to do market research or something like that. Um, let me give you an example of market research that I've done from this farm. Um, going to a market and selling one time, that's how you do market research. You don't sit on a desk and read a bunch of books about what the market's going to be like, or like going on a market's Facebook page and looking at the photos of what's there and getting a feel for the people that are going to that market and the vendors that are there. That was the extent of the market research I did to go to a new market this year, you know? My point is there's so many useless skills that I learned in school that I don't actually use because the way they teach you in school to do market research is like do a bunch of research on um, case studies and academic journals on what the market says it's going to do or something like that. That's useless. It's so impractical. You know, if I had learned how to do this kind of stuff in school, I would have been, it would have shaved six months off of my build time of this farm, you know, if I had known how to do all that. And I guess I want to see more people be able to do this kind of stuff. And I'm not going to teach it on this channel, you know, you got to learn it yourself. But when you start a farm, 
even if you do a part-time farm, like what I talked about in the last video, you're still going to have to build stuff a little bit. And you're going to learn that kind of stuff that's going to help you uh, later on in life. If you ever have a plumbing project that you got to do in your house later on, you'll be able to figure it out a lot easier than somebody who's clueless. Because when I was clueless, it was, it takes me, it took me 10 times as long to figure out a project. You know, I didn't know how to do, how to figure things out yet. Um, I didn't know how to go to Ace Hardware and ask the right questions. Now I do. Because honestly, I still don't know a lot about being handy compared to somebody who's like an electrician or a plumber or something. But I know how to figure it out. You know, I still have to go ask tons of questions when I go to an irrigation store or something. But I know what questions to ask and how to figure out the answer quickly now. That saves me a lot of time and headache and stress. You know, when I didn't know any better, it was much more stressful to get these projects done because I have to call somebody that I and trust somebody else to help me with it. And they could be messing with you. They could screw you, basically. You know, I, it's going to be a lot harder for somebody to screw me over on a job that I pay them to do because I'm going to know better. I'm going to know what work is involved when I hire them, when I hire a plumber or something. I'll have a vague idea at least. Um, and that's pretty useful, you know, all throughout your, the rest of your life, no matter how much money you have, if you do pay other people to do it, it's still helpful for you to know how it's done because of what I just said. So being handy, huge life skill. So probably the second most important lesson that you learn by starting a farm like this is how to run a business. This is a business. That's how you make money doing it, right? It's not just like a job that you go punch in time and get a paycheck. That's not how this works. This is a business. How you get paid is by running a real business. And again, even if you start a farm part time and stick with it for a year or two and decide you want to do something else, you're going to learn how to be a salesman, how to produce a real product. How to keep your costs down to make money, understand profit margins, how to buy things cheap to keep your costs down. Those are real life skills that even if you never want to start a business again, those are really handy skills. You know, I know how to go through a grocery store or when I'm shopping for any kind of stuff that I need, I know how to crunch the numbers in my head without even thinking about it. It's second nature. And I'm be like, okay, I save three, four dollars here. I save twenty dollars here. If I buy in bulk here, I save another X amount of dollars. You know, right here, this big pile of bags over here, this saves me about oh, uh, what does it save me? A couple thousand dollars a year because I found a local source for a soil amendment that I need that saves tons on shipping. The shipping to ship soil amendments for somewhere else is astronomical. Those kinds of skills, again, even if you're not going to start a business, are invaluable. And if you do want to start another business, it's going to be so much easier for you because you've done it yourself already. You'll, you'll know that, like I said earlier, you have very little control over the end result of the business, right? You have you set a structure and do your absolute best, but at the end of the day, it's going to take time to build it. You know, no business is profitable overnight. It takes time. And you'll know how to set your expectations and be flexible with what's going on, right? So if you know how to start a business like this, starting another business later on, if you don't want to do farming, and... You know, one of the other things I'm doing is I have a garden course, full disclosure, link is in the description, but that's a business that I started a couple years ago that excites me a lot because it doesn't have the costs that this business does. You know, so I saw that opportunity and understood it immediately because I've started this. That opportunity is really awesome because I kind of know how to start a garden really well because I grow all this stuff. And doing it on a garden scale is way easier than this. Um, so I know how to teach all of that. And I developed a video course and working with a, another business on getting it out on the internet. And it's in, it exists now. Link is in the description. But 
I started that business because I know how much time it's really going to take me to run, which is way less than this, but it's still some time. But it's an opportunity that uh, I couldn't pass up because I understand the cost structure and there's it's all video. So you buy it and it's all there. The point I'm making is I could start a lot of other businesses now easier because of the experience I have building this, which is a really difficult business. There's no two ways about it. Farming is hard. Um, I think this is probably one of the easiest ways to make money doing it is this style, um, at least for my context, but um, it's still really hard business. You know, it's, it's, there's still very few people that are going to go and do it to this level. Um, and uh, if you know how to run businesses, you know how to budget your life also, right? So like I said, buying things at the grocery store, you become a lot more budget conscious just because you have to do that when you're running a business like this or else you don't make money. You know, there's a large incentive for you to be economical when you run a business that you don't really understand that when you just work for somebody else. Because when you work for somebody else, you're part of their cost, right? I have to think about that now. I have employees. So my biggest cost is employees by far. And I think that's pretty common for almost every business, right? So for me to cut costs, not only do I have to try and cut my materials down, but I have to figure out how to make labor work really productively for very little effort. So that means I have to use things like the paper pot transplanter, which we have a whole bunch of flats right here that eliminates hand transplanting for certain crops, makes it so we can plant the whole bed in five minutes instead of an hour. Those kinds of things are a game changer. I have water timers to water all the plants without anybody doing anything. Those are the kinds of things that I am implementing in my business to make my life easier and make my costs stay way lower. So, you know, when you run a really intense business like this where there's a million moving parts and you figure out how to do it in a way that doesn't take all of your time, you can apply that into a lot of other situations in life. And I think it's really, really valuable. I wish more people understood business because I think the world would work a lot differently um, because the world runs on business. Amazon is one of the most successful businesses of all time. And uh, there's a lot you could learn from studying those kinds of businesses. But I can look at Amazon and I understand how it works, where I think most people don't really think twice. They're just buying stuff from them, you know. And uh, I just would think, I think the world would be a lot better place if more people understood business and had that skill set in their repertoire because you don't learn that stuff in school. Um, I, most business schools, I think, are really recruiting people to work in the corporate world and be a part of another business, but you're not really learning how to run the business, right? And that's definitely the case for me. It's the case for all the friends that I have that went to business school with me. None of them are using what they learned in business school. Um, and I wish more people, I wish I was taught these skills in school somehow. And honestly, I don't even know if you can. You have to do it. Right. So if I had to do my life over again, I wish I had the opportunity to work at a place like this and have somebody like me explain how it works, because then I would have all sorts of light bulbs pop up in my head and I could have seen opportunities that I wouldn't have seen or that I didn't see in my life um, that actually I probably missed. You know what I'm saying? So um, if I was 16 and I was exposed to this, I think my life would have been a lot different. I would have started a business a lot earlier. So business, learning how to run a business is an invaluable life skill that will benefit you whether you have a business or not. <clears throat> so when you're a farmer and your income depends on the yield of the crops that you're growing and you're growing them outside, you're going to end up working in pretty tough weather condi conditions. I've worked in temperatures up to 105, over 100 all the time, and negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, when I say negative 30, I'm not exactly outside harvesting cilantro, but I am walking through snow and 
doing it every day for two weeks, twice a day to go check heaters because my income depends on it. I don't have any other way to protect the crops than just manually make sure things are working. And it sort of hardened me off since I've started um, to where I'm a lot tougher than I was when I started. And I think my generation has become pretty soft because of all of the convenience we've had, right? We grew up with Facebook, we grew up with internet, video games, air conditioning, um, and I'm totally, I grew up with all that stuff. I grew up with very easy childhood, easy upbringing um, compared to most people up until I started this. And uh, working like that in those conditions and not only the weather, but like the stress of this business and learning which problems are worth stressing about and which ones aren't and how to navigate problems. It gives you a lot of perspective on what problems are significant and what aren't. And what I mean by that is my generation, especially, and I'm really talking about mostly my generation here is pretty soft on the problem stuff because we'll stress about, you know, an Amazon package being delivered three days later than it was supposed to, right? You know, that overnight delivery thing is supposed to be part of life now. And, um, that wasn't a thing for my parents' generation. And the, I, you know, I just recently went on a trip, uh, a party, a bachelor party with uh, friends of mine that I grew up with. And I noticed that there's just some stuff I can't relate to them on anymore. Like they were stressing about the plans the whole time. Like, where are we supposed to be? What time we need to be there and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, this is my vacation. I'm not going to be stressing about that. I refuse to stress about that. Cause I have real stress with my business that, you know, um, I have to figure out a way to compartmentalize my, the pressure in my life to where I can still have fun on my time off. Right. I had a whole farm running for a couple days during the middle of the growing season while I was in, I was gone. You know, that's the first time I've ever done that really is this year. But, um, that in and of itself is stressful, but I tried to compartmentalize all that stress before I left. So I had all these things in place to um, keep it running while I was gone. But I guess my point is like the stress that a lot of people have would become a lot less significant if they were tougher. You know, if they had uh, experience with the kind of failures and, and peaks and valleys that you have when you run a business. Um, you know, things like what I'm talking about is like first world problems. You hear that phrase thrown around sometimes, you know, those become pretty insignificant when you deal with the weather problems that I'm talking about, the weather stress, the, the business stress, you know, um, one of the big things for me is like, I have had problems in the past. I have not at all right now, but in the past where you hire people and they were here for a couple of weeks and then they just quit. That is brutally stressful because all of a sudden overnight your workload triples you know those are the kinds of things that stress me out um and it's not like i'm getting better at managing that but once you've dealt with some of those kinds of problems or you have a whole greenhouse full of tomatoes that are worth thousands of dollars just stop producing for you um you know you learn how to really manage your expectations with life and with projects you've got going but also just stresses that a lot of other people have become insignificant um, and you could just sail through a lot of things. And I used to be terrible with this. I mean, it kind of goes back to trying to control everything. You don't have a lot of control over, you know, hiring a plumber to come or something. You don't have control over when he's going to be there. So you just hire him and you hope he's going to be there. And if he shows up and he's reliable, then you want to hire him again. But, you know, if, you, if he doesn't, then that's, that is what it is. It, it always is what it is. And that's a tough lesson for me. I've, I mean, it's been really painful for me because I 
you know, used to be much more controlling on that kind of stuff. But I mean, you just kind of learn to, you know, I, I can learn like this spring, this whole field was covered in dandelions because I did not do a good job of managing it the year before. And I told myself since about April, this is a problem that will get solved. And I just kept on telling myself that. And I didn't stress about it, but it honestly was a huge problem. The, you have to dig them out with a, with a fork and pull them out and they're a foot long because that's the only way to permanently remove them. And it, it taught me the really hard lesson of never letting that happen again, which means we've been pulling dandelions and weeds in this whole field like crazy this whole season to, to, and it's immaculate now. It's almost, there's almost nothing going to seed. There's a few things I could see, but it's compared to last year, it's so much better because I've gone through that painful experience and I didn't stress about it this year at all. But like in a couple of years ago, I would have been freaking out. I wouldn't lose and sleep over it, you know? So the, it, I can look at a big pile of problems now and just calmly examine the problem and break it down and solve it. And without stressing out, it doesn't bother me anymore. And, um, it's just because I've become tougher with dealing with problems. It doesn't bother me. Weather, weather fluctuations doesn't bother me anymore. Really. You know, I expect it to get negative 20 every winter. It's not like the end of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, you become a lot more confident when you've dealt with all those kinds of problems before. And that confidence will bleed out into all other areas in your life. You're going to be com more confident with whatever you want to do. And, uh, you know, I think this is true with other jobs and stuff. It's not like you can't get these skills anywhere else, but just it's really concentrated with farming. And I think people should do it just to experience it. And, you know, it, just for the education part of it, I mean, don't go to college, do this for a year or two and then do whatever you want. You're going to be way better off kind of the moral of this video as what I'm saying is do this for a little while or do this is one thing you could do for a little while to get some real world experience that you could apply to whatever you want in life. So that's that piece of advice. So the last thing I want to talk about is you learn how to figure things out when you start a business or a farm like this. You learn how to figure things out. There's no textbook or handbook you can read that you could just regurgitate an answer to solve why my carrots didn't germinate that well, right? You know, there's lots of YouTube videos that explain this. There's the farm courses I've talked about in other videos that explain it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going to have to figure out how to get the best results even with all the resources out there. And in school, you're taught how to read a history book and regurgitate all that information on a test. But that's not really going to help you much in life. You know, the, I, I mean, learning math and stuff is real important. I use math all the time, but I mean, the math that I use is probably stuff I learned in eighth grade, maybe high school. But um, the, regurgitating facts is pretty useless on in most of real life, in my opinion. So I've learned, I've shaved a lot off of my learning curve, like years with those farm courses I've talked about with the never sink farm course, reading Curtis Stone's book. Um, those guys have absolutely paved the way and educated me in a way that, um, there's nobody else that could have taught me those kinds of things. But, even with those resources, like for example, these carrots, um, the way that you're taught how to germinate in the course, it works really well, but I still have problems that are only relevant to my land. I have clay soil. It, Never Sink Farm has sandy soil. So the results are way different. I have to be a lot more on top of the moisture levels to make sure that the carrots can emerge because that clay becomes a, like a level of concrete. And so I'm working really hard to change the organic matter level of the first inch or two of my soil so that 
doesn't become a problem. I think I almost figured it out anyway, because the results are just getting better over time. Most of it just is that my soil is much newer than a guy like uh, Connor Crickmore's soil. His soil, is, he's been doing it a lot longer than me. But, uh, you know, I still have to figure things out. Like the first couple of years, I had to figure out how to get good germination without, um, you know, I had to figure it out myself, basically. So, you know, there's a couple of tricks you can do to increase your chances, like put these kind of white fabrics down, stuff like that. Um, watering it every day is what I was already doing, but it wasn't good enough sometimes. Using fresh seed, stuff like that, all sorts of those tricks um, increase your results. But I ultimately had to just figure it out myself. And I've had to do that with tons of stuff around here to kind of figure out how to apply all those skills that you learn in those courses to Wyoming, to this context. And, you know, you're going to have to do that whether wherever you start a farm. You're going to have to figure out how to fit it into your climate, your context, all that stuff. But figuring stuff out, you're learning how to use my brain in the problem-solving way is something I never really learned in school. Um, you know, because... I think most of what's taught in school is just regurgitating information or, you know, with math, you have to do a little bit of problem solving, I guess you're solving a math problem, but I'm good at solving problems now because of this experience. Um, you know, uh, I, I've, I've learned that I'm good at it because I've helped my dad with a bunch of stuff that he didn't know how to do, which is weird because my dad's actually pretty handy. You know, like we just, we re-dug out this irrigation canal that um, flood irrigates our backyard for um, apple trees. And um, just because of my experience of uh, doing excavation work here on the farm for burying my irrigation system and stuff, I, I looked at it and I'm like, all you need to do is dig it out another six inches and clear the culverts that the water is running through to make sure the water runs smoothly and i've never done any kind of irrigation work like that myself but i know how to figure it out because i've done enough excavation work to you know i could just use my past experience with that to be like i look at this situation and then i'm like i can solve this problem it's not that hard um whereas if i never had any of that experience it'd be a little bit more stressful because you really need that irrigation water to have any kind of apples in our backyard right that's just an example, but the point is like, I can look at new situations all the time because of my problem solving experience and solve the problem. And it, it reduces my stress level because it'll be like, oh yeah, I could, I know how to deal with that. I'll deal with it later. And I know how to, you know, prioritize, um, my time also like this, this is a problem that could wait a couple weeks. It's not urgent, right? Um, problem solving is a huge part of life. And you need to be able to reason and use your brain in original ways. You can't just read books and uh, regurgitate the information. You know, you need to be able to think. And once you're able to do that, you can write your own ticket. You know, you could do a lot of things, especially if you start your own business, because you're going to need to problem solve. You know, you're going to be able to navigate a lot of those situations a lot better just because of that experience. You've, it's like a muscle in your brain, you know, and... Uh, I think it's really valuable. I wish I had a lot more of this experience when I was younger. Um, not that I'm really old. I'm only 33. I'm not old. But, um, you know, I, I could have started this stuff a lot younger and um, my life would have been different. Not that it was bad and I'm really excited about my life anyway. But just my point is I kind of have a problem with the mainstream education system and I think exposing more people to this kind of stuff could change that in a really positive way and give people really practical skills they could take with them in anything they want to do in life a lot earlier than you know waiting till you're 22 and you graduate college with a mountain of debt that and zero skills which is the narrative of my generation your only chance out is to work at a corporate job and make work up that ladder, but you're still not using anything you learned in school. Um, and so I just want to show people an alternative. Um, not that I want to necessarily make everybody who watches this video into a farmer, but just exposure to farming, 
you know, is, I think would make the world a lot better. I, I live in a farming community now. I grew up in a suburban area where there was no farming and the culture here and the toughness of people here is light years higher than where I grew up. I mean, everybody's a lot tougher here, not just because of the weather. I mean, the weather is worse where I came from, I think, but the, uh, there's so many more farmers around here and they're all tough. They all could relate to what I'm talking about in some way, shape or form, because, you know, it's salt of the earth work and you, it, it, there's, there's just a confidence of people around here that I don't see from my generation where I grew up. There's a lot of depression where I grew up because nobody knows what they want to do with their life. And not to say that that's a whole lot better here in terms of people knowing what they want to do, but at least there's a confidence of like, I could figure it out. Right. I have that self-starting attitude that, um, because I've done some kind of farming work in the past, I can figure out what I want to do in life. So I hope that makes sense to somebody out there. I'm kind of rambling. Um, it's just something I've been thinking about for years. So uh, if that was valuable, you know, give the like button at the bottom of this video a click and subscribe for a lot more content like this. We're going to be sharing a lot more of what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis here on the farm coming up. And... Um, we still got a lot more season coming up here. So I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.